and uh, you know, evolving wilds, making an impact there. Yeah, and this is very similar. Previously, I, if you remember, standard back in, toward the end of 2009, mm. there was. Uh, you know, this huge surge of black-white token decks back then. And again, oh, yeah. they only had one land that produced both black and white mana. So what they did was they started playing um, Arcane Sanctum, which is very right, similar right. to our Evolving Wild, same thing, yeah. almost. So they right, were also so we're trying off. to cast um, Spectral Recession. Yeah, <laughs> LSV and what was that, Pro Tour? Uh, Kyoto. Kyoto, yeah. I was there. Yeah, I did very well day one and then lost every match I played on day two. <laughs> All right, so. A Ratchet Bomb on turn two from Adam Prozac to battle the champion of the parish from Heath Perdue. And let's see, does Heath Perdue have a Lingering Souls for turn three? No, it's an Honor of the Pure. And it looks like Heath is casting his spells one turn behind. He probably drew the champion on turn two and had a little <laughs> bit of a hiccup in his curve. Yeah. Well, so the Ratchet Bomb's there. Safety valve. So something nice Heath did there. It's very likely that Heath has some sort of token producer in his hand, mm -hmm. but Heath waits till Adam ticks up that ratchet bomb before he decides to go ahead and cast that spell. Right. Let's see. A hero, hero. blade hold. Now, hero is just one of the strongest cards uh, that's around right now. It's you know, if it ever attacks, you're basically just crushing your opponent with an honor of the pure and play. It attacks for ten the first time it attacks. That's a lot of ridiculous, damage. yeah. Now, Adam, so, uh, fervently searching for a card that can kill this hero, Bladefold. Yeah, just goes through it, basically cycles the spell bomb there, just trying to get cards. Um, yeah, and, and Heat there, I'm not sure if you even need to play that Vault of the Archangel. You kind of reveal what you're playing by doing that. Also, casting some spells. Oh, it's an intentional virtue. Intentional virtue, yeah, that's. Uh, oh, wow. That's so that's 12. <laughs> He's stacking for 12 right now. Yeah, one guy. Making that? a huge impact. Obviously, not just one, but one card making a yeah. massive impact. So Adam's going to fall to six here. It looks like Adam's playing mono black right now. Obviously, we know that's not the case, but Adam may want to uh, hold off on playing anything blue. Yeah. And Adam so, just packs it in. So Heath may, uh, may very well not play around any counter spells in game two just from having not seen anything from Adam. Uh, and I mean, that's that's what Hero of Bladehold does. That was, you, you said uh -huh. it, you know, it's one of the strongest cards in the format and uh, it, it proved it right there. That was... Now, that I don't was know if anybody intense. else was playing the Fantasy Pro Tour on Facebook. I did do that, yeah. For a medium-sized creature, did you pick Hero of Bladehold? I didn't, I picked Geist of St. Traft. Nice. What, did you choose Hero? Um, I had a, uh, I did end up choosing Hero, but I had I had a little bit of a an internal struggle because yeah. I really wanted <laughs> to take Solemn Simulacrum. <laughs> oh, I just I didn't know what to do. I was like Solemn Simulacrum, Hero Blade Hold. Which one do I pick? I think I went uh, snap, Snapcaster, Geist of Saint Traft, and uh, I think Primeval Titan may have been the right pick, but I picked Sun Titan anyway just to be stubborn <laughs> because I didn't want it to be Primeval Titan. Uh, what, what was your uh, what were your creatures? Well, obviously Snapcaster Mage, Hero of Bladehold, and Primeval Titan. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, obviously, you know, we're on the same similar wavelength for uh, for the small and the large creatures. I didn't even consider Hero because I saw Geist and Geist of Saint Traft and thought, yeah, I, I I feel like it's seen play in different kinds of decks. You know, Hero is pretty much in just these kind of white based aggro decks, but some of the uh, you know, some control decks are even playing Geist of St. Traft in, in sideboards and things. Oh yeah, I mean, Geist is certainly going to see a ton of play. I think it's one of the, the best cards around. I think the biggest problem that Geist has going into this Pro Tour is that I wasn't sure how many people were going to go Geist and how many people were going to go Drogskill Captain. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, you can't really play both. So Unless you, you won Top 8 last weekend in Richmond, then you can. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you... Uh... Did you? What, what was your choice for for Planeswalker? Um, I took Soren, yeah. <laughs> which is probably a mistake. I probably should take Garrick Relentless. I went with Liliana, even though again it, I was kind of thinking I may be, you know, making the wrong choice here. But you know, it, it's all in fun, so I'm, I'm yeah, kind of I mean, partly it's... was it was wishful thinking too <laughs> on yeah. my part because you know Soren I figured just goes in one deck, you know, pretty much just a 
like a black white tokens deck. It's kind of sees some play, you know, as an Elspeth kind of thing in in some other decks, but um, and it is popular right now. So I thought that might be have a lot going for it that way. But um, I just went with Liliana because I felt like she she kind of can go in multiple different you know black based strategies. But Soren may have may have been a better pick. Yeah, I'm also interested to see like once this format shakes out, Liliana. You know, it might be much better now than it was previously, and I know it seems strange because the token strategies and those are bad because mm -hmm. you know she's trying to edict people. Yeah. But in the same way, you can plus one Liliana and discard a Lingering Souls. That's that, yeah. really fun. <laughs> <laughs> you discard, and I get you know to use my card. Well, then again, you can plus one Liliana, and they discard Linger Lingering Souls too. Yeah. So. And, and I mean, we don't know how the standard format will look in three weeks. Right. Because you know. Right now we have the Pro Tour happening this weekend, but those aren't going to be the decks people are playing in three weeks. In three weeks it's all going to change again. And this tournament, you know, people have access to that information from the Pro Tour, so they're going to be reacting and changing their decks in that way. Yeah. All right, we're off to the races, and Adam, on the play, leads off with a basic. Heath with a basic of his own. Adam, Adam reveals to yeah. Heath that he's playing blue! <laughs> I'm playing blue! <laughs> and Heath you know, boarded in all his Celestial Purges. Just, <laughs> he may very well have it. But uh, I don't know how many black permanents he's gonna have to deal with. There is a Soren Markov in Prozac's deck. Um, and I guarantee you that the, uh, the number of Celestial Purges to the number of Soren Markovs <laughs> is uh, <laughs> not really the ratio that uh, Heath wants right now. So Evolving Wilds helps Heath out there, gets a swamp. So this game's uh, going okay for Adam on this, at this point, nothing really from Heath. And here we go. Oh, Mirror Crusader. Crusader gets a Mana Leak. Now if you have Mirror Crusader and Lingering Souls there, I think you lead with Lingering Souls. Because it's going to have a very similar effect. Adam's going to be forced to counter it, but at the same time, you just end up with the card in your graveyard, and yeah, you actually just back. accrued card advantage. Yeah. Another evolving wild there for Heath, and he's immediately going to the deck. Swamp. Another swamp. Chooses to go for uh, the double black mana before the triple white mana. Which is interesting, considering... He wants to be able to cast the Damnation, I think. Just in case. Well, I think that's telling him his hand, too. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, uh, I mean, he doesn't have that much black. I don't know. He's, maybe his hand is, you know, multiple copies of Lingering Souls, so he wants yeah, to... Yeah, he wants to be able to... Flashback, but he didn't cast it that turn, so... Well, Forbidden Alchemy uh, at the end of Heat's turn from Adam there. And, uh, and that's got to put Adam in a pretty good spot. Yeah, it looks like he just dumped a bunch of lands in the graveyard, so... Um, Seems, I guess Adam is a little bit flooded, maybe. So Adam he, activating milling a drown yard, milling yeah. himself. Pretty good in a deck like Adam's. He has access to uh, more Forbidden Alchemies and Think Twices. So he mills those into his graveyard. He actually gains a small incremental advantage. And three mana from Heath. Another Crusader with Mana Leak mana up. Yep, choosing to play around the Mana Leak. Very nice. Mirror Crusader, very strong against Adam's deck. Adam choosing Forbidden Alchemy at the end of Pete's turn. Now he's got to find an answer for the Mirror Crusader. And it doesn't look like his deck has that much. You know, he has access to some Tribute to Hungers, a Lace Finale, and some Black Sun Zeniths. So let's see if he uses one right away, or if he waits to see if Pete's going to commit more to the board. He just uh, binned another Mana Leak, a Ratchet Bomb, and uh, I think a land there from the Forbidden Alchemy. Now we're either going to see a Tribute to Hunger, or Adam is probably slow rolling a Mass Removal spell. Uh-oh. Looks like Heath is very flooded here. Alright, well, Crusader gets in and looks like Vault is activated. 
All right, so that's going to put Adam down to 16, and Heath's going to pop himself up to 24 here. Adam must have had a really good spell in that Forbidden Alchemy because we saw a Dismember, a Mana Leak, and a Think Twice hit the bin. Yeah, well. What do we got? Black Sun Zenith. Well, a Black work. Sun Zenith, and Puts the you know, Adam gets to things. shuffle that back into his library, which is very strong with uh, the Think Twices and Forbidden Alchemies. Keeps getting to shuffle these Wrath Effects back in, and because this deck is just becoming smaller and smaller over time, it actually gains a greater density of these Wrath Effects, so yeah. as your opponent's running out of steam, you're filling up on it. So it's interesting. Blue Black Control, an interesting choice in a new format. Heath getting in for one with his token, and he activates the Vault again. Putting Adam down to 15 and Heath up to 25 here. And that's a nice spirit token. Yeah. I wonder how one could acquire those. Do yeah. we know? I, I actually... Well, we don't have the uh, information in front of us, but is but that you actually, one of the new Star City spirit tokens? It is, and you get some random tokens every time you place an order with StarCityGames.com. And uh, they can get dismembered, just like Heath's did. Yeah, and that's not even a real card, so your opponent's <laughs> going to spend real cards to deal with your tokens. Yeah. And that's because you have Star City tokens. And Soren Markov. Surprise. Incoming Celestial Purge. Wrong Soren. Or the right Soren. <laughs> now, he's probably going to go for an end of turn Celestial Purge here if he has multiples in his hand, which seems likely considering he's not playing any threats. Yeah. And he wants Adam to burn a Mana Leak on this. Because if Adam Mana Leaks this, then he can just resolve another one during his turn, and he just got the Mana Leak out of Adam's hand. Yeah. Meanwhile, that second Celestial Purge is in his hand, basically a dead card. Adam did do 15 with that Soren, though, <laughs> knocking Heath to 10. Very effective use of, uh, of that Soren. Let me see what happens here. Elspeth. So maybe Adam doesn't have a second copy of Celestial Perch, in which case I may have waited to play around the Mana Leak. Well, he did manage to, uh, you know, set it up so he can resolve Elspeth. And which resolving Elspeth's pretty good too. Yeah, I think <laughs> Elspeth will. Uh, you know, Soren's not not going to stick around very long, I don't think. But uh, we'll and see. That's it. Oh, Soren's wow. vengeance. Soren, and then his vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> very very nice. Adam just says, you know. You know, I never caught that. <laughs> really? The names? <laughs> and why why that was named that? Now I know. The more you know. There you go. <laughs> That was great. I like that. You know, just consecutive turns. Knock you to 10. Knock hit you for 10. Also, Adam is at 21 now. Yes. <laughs> that, that was pretty awesome. And if he had an answer for that, he was going to Snapcaster. He really could have played Snapcaster Shorn's Vengeance next. I mean, that's one of the cooler interactions. I, I, you know, we don't have a cruel ultimatum really in standard right now, but I think Soren's Vengeance does a pretty good impression. You know, seven mana sorcery that pretty much can uh, can get close to ending the game on its own. Yeah, I mean, it, it kills other. people. Yeah. We saw Patrick Chapin finish in the finals of Grand Prix Orlando. Yeah. His deck featuring Snapcaster Mage and Soren's Vengeance. And I watched him win many matches just by casting Soren's Vengeance twice. <laughs> yeah. Adam has three copies of Soren's Vengeance in his deck. <laughs> He's just like, and just, the, you know, just the one Soren there to, uh, to do the first ten. And I guess it's not that bad because, you know, with these seven mana spells, a lot of the time people say things like, well, you never want to draw more than one of it. But with Swords Vengeance, I mean, if you cast one, what, what <laughs> card would you want more than right, another than the next one? one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, he sets it up so that, you know, he ha once he plays What's one Swords Vengeance, right? I think it's, <laughs> I think it's ever, you know, you know, infinite, basically. Uh, I mean, All but that was very relevant there because if that Soren had been a Soren's Vengeance, Heath would have been at five there. I mean, Adam would have been at uh, at what thirty one, uh -huh. so he probably would have been in good shape. But you know, it wouldn't have actually ended the game. And being able to play Soren and put his his opponent at exactly ten was perfect there. And um, 
yeah, I really really like it. And this is, you know, the power of the late game decks, and this is, you know, why why you play a late game deck. You just stall, stall, stall. That's, that's the fun of playing control. A friend of mine that uh, kind of just started playing is like, I always, I always feel like I'm winning against you, and then you win. I don't understand. I'm like, yeah, well, that's what a control deck does. That's you how know? it works. Nothing, 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 win. That's, that's what it does. He'll, like, you know, knock me to, to two, and then I come back. I think Heath actually is a big advantage in this matchup. Yeah. The the last game, it looked like he may have kept a five lander, which is unfortunate. But I I haven't played black white tokens yet in no, the new me format, neither. so I'm not sure how you have to mulligan. So maybe maybe you have to keep hands like that. But a five lander generally, when you're the aggro, is pretty risky. Another issue though is Heath may know that black white tokens does not mulligan very well. When you're playing this many Anthem effects, a lot of the time if you're mulliganing, you end up mulliganing into a hand that's Anthem effects with no guys, or just, you know, like, Anthem effects with no guys is basically the yeah, big problem, does the thing you're worried about, <laughs> yeah. so. I mean, you have these spells that are the powerful vault. that just don't do anything. I wonder if him having the, the vault affected his decision. Maybe, you know, I don't know if it was in his opener, but I'm assuming maybe it was, and he was thinking, well, I, I can draw into some spells and, uh, I mean, he also had Evolving Wilds, which maybe was part of it, too, where he was uh, thinking, I, I can, can get some lands out of my deck, make it less likely that I draw them. Yeah. I mean, it looked like he also was drawing into them, too. Like, yeah. he, he played the turn to Evolving Wilds, probably tearing up the top of his deck, like, oh, I can thin my deck with a couple lands, hopefully I won't draw any more. And there we have... Uh, Intangible in Virtue. Intangible Virtue. Anthem with no guys. I'm sure Heath will uh, rectify that right now. Is there such thing as Tangible Virtue? <laughs> That's a good point. I'd like to see that. Tangible Virtue. Seems redundant. Yeah. <laughs> it's an emblem, I guess. I don't know. All right. And a negate on Lingering Souls. That trade actually favors Heath. Yeah. Although it does slow the game down a little bit, just, you know... And that's helps. what Adam wants to do. Exactly. He just wants to stall. He's trying to get the seven mana to just yeah. chain some Sword's Vengeance <laughs> exactly. together. I mean, how good is Sword's Vengeance? Not only does it does it hit them for ten, it gains you ten. So that's pretty big. That that's a doomed traveler. It's uh, funny, like aptly named. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the more flavorful cards. I, this set it has so much flavor in it. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of. It's really a lot of fun. Like, not the set, I mean this block. It's really a lot of fun to, to look and go, yeah, Doomed Traveler is exactly that. So he flashbacks uh, Lingering Souls. So Heath... Heath going from zero to five points of power on the table. Yeah. All in one foul swoop. Only using one card. And, he's and lucky. playing around Manly. <laughs> yeah. He's lucky he randomly ended up with Spirit Tokens from Star City. You know, or else we, we don't know what kind of tokens he'd be producing. Well, I think we provide them at the booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just kidding. I actually f forgot all about that. I have an order to pick up at the booth, and, and I was pretty excited about the, uh, the, the tokens to see what tokens I get, but I forgot to pick it up. Forgot that I get the tokens. Now I'm excited to see what I get. I like them a lot. They kind of remind me of Paper Mario. I remember that, like, vaguely. I never played it, but... Yeah. I'm a big fan of the wolf token. There's Vault of the Archangel. Heath. All right, Heath. Cracking in. Gonna bring Adam down to 15 here. Now let's see what he has for uh, for us post combat. It's a gather the townsfolk again, playing around the mana league. Now, do you bother casting gather the townsfolk here? Uh, it doesn't speed up your clock at all. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know, I guess... And uh, you're play playing against a deck with a lot of Wrath effects, too, Right, so. yeah. It, you wonder, like, if that's really the right play. He's got some great pressure right now, so... Especially because he's already cast Forbidden Alchemy. Like, the odds of him not having a Zenith in hand already. Or a Ratchet Bomb, or... Yeah. And there's the Ratchet Bomb. Yep. Now, Heath's board of uh, nine power becomes a board of... Just one. Just one power. Yeah. Intangible virtue. 
not so tangible to the Doom Traveler. <laughs> but I guess that's the point, it's intangible. There's another Doom Traveler. Another Doom Traveler. There were almost there were about 200 players playing in their first pro tour in Hawaii this weekend. Wow. A lot of them may be referred to as Doom Travelers. <laughs> Heath getting in for two, activating his Vault of the Archangel. We're gonna put himself to 22. Adam down to 12 here, and that's surprisingly relevant considering Adam's on the Triple Swords yeah, exactly. plan. Hit it, Sugu's second right. And another ratchet bomb from Adam. Makes things pretty difficult for Heath here. Yeah, it's interesting though, you know, the, the tension there. Does he want to, you know, tick that ratchet bomb up and then have, you know, four power worth of guys? Or does he have a zenith that he can, you know, he can do zenith and then ratchet bomb to deal with the tokens? Because I mean, otherwise these Doom Travelers are, you know, Heath's fine with these Doom Travelers just getting in to gather the townsfolk. And there you have to ask yourself, is two life really worth the, the op giving my opponent the opportunity to mana leak my gather the townsfolk? Right, yeah, the uh, activating the vault there. Gather the townsfolk. A uh, raise the alarm from the new set. That has a lot of synergy with cards like Intangible Virtue, Honor the Pure and Star and Lord of Innistrad. We need an Isochron Scepter to go with that Raise of the Alarm. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> or, or maybe we really just don't at all. It might be terrible. For the format, that is. Adam milling himself, finding a Forbidden Alchemy to put into his graveyard. Now, he's not really applying that much pressure now, so... Adam... Definitely with a Black Sun Cena Ooh, Ooh a life's, life's Finale! finale. Interesting that he, uh, he, did he leave that in or bring that in? He's got one in the sideboard, that's it. So he brought that in. I guess yeah. it's just an additional wrath effect, but... It also makes sure that your opponent, like, sometimes your removal is pretty conditional against these decks. There are yeah. cards like, there are cards that don't kill Hero Blade Hold. There are cards that, there are a ton of cards that don't interact well yeah. with Mirror Crusader. Yeah. So depending on what's, at, what's in Adam's hand, he can just, you know, make his opponent's deck not have Mirror Crusaders yeah, anymore. Yeah, Or not have Hero remove. Blade Holds anymore. Let me find out what uh, what Adam took out of Heath's deck there. I would say it's probably the, the Mirror Crusaders. Oh, there we go. We yep. can see it's uh, Mirror Crusaders. Mirror Crusaders. Yeah. Never mind. So Heath with one Mirror Crusader remaining in his deck, theoretically, unless he boarded it out for some unknown reason. Yes, the, he may be the one elusive person who boards out a Mirror Crusader against the black deck. <laughs> Very similar to sideboarding out your core firewalkers against the red deck. <laughs> Man, that life's finale is really shaking things up over there. Uh -huh. uh, oh, hero, and a hero with hold. mana. League mana. All right, Adam's uh, Adam. gotta find an answer. Quick. He's probably got one in his hand, but. I mean, he's been flashing stuff back and... Yeah, forbidden alchemy, all kinds of stuff. Okay, he taps two mana. Is this his... Oh, Snapcaster. Okay, Starting Snapcaster, dismember, and then... dismember. All right, pays for the dismember. It's funny, like, whenever I think of dismember, I automatically think it costs four life. Like, for some reason in my head. It's like, I always associate it with paying for life but yeah you can actually uh pay black instead and elspeth and we have it looks like snapcaster negate yeah snapcaster negate so adam now with a ton of answers Heath, nothing in his hand i don't think nope. and two Plays intangible virtues card. now he's played intangible virtue but again there we have the uh situation we were talking about you know anthem effect with no guys adam's done a, a yeah, good the, job uh, of stabilizing right here 
Oh, there's a guy. Was that right off the top? Yeah. So, but I don't think it matters at this point. I think Adam has accrued far too much card advantage. He's flashing back a Forbidden Alchemy, looking for uh, some way to deal with that Hero of Blade Hold. It doesn't look like he found one, though. Now, it was just a couple lands and like a, a counter spell, I think. Looks like another Forbidden Alchemy. Now, Hero of Blade Hold here is going to be crashing in for 11 with Double <laughs> Intangible Virtue. Yeah, that's, uh, he's, he's got to find an answer. Are both players empty handed here? Uh, I think Adam has three cards in hand. Also with a few Forbidden Alchemies in his yard. Yeah, and a ton of mana. There's a flashback Forbidden Alchemy here. Oh no, it's a Soren's Vengeance. Yeah. That'll uh, I was like, I'll that'll go to help. 20, you'll go to 14. Now, Heath has that vault, though, to uh, start turning the, the tables back, swinging the pend pendulum the other way. And is that a ratchet bomb? It's a ratchet bomb. That's surprisingly strong defense against this hero of Bladehold. Now, Heath might not even want to attack now. Right, because you get double black ratchet, double yeah. block ratchet bomb and, you know, clears the board. Yeah, and that clear board when you're at 10 and your opponent's playing the uh, on the Soren's Vengeance plan. Not great, but he decides to go for it. Does he have anything here that could save him from the double block play? Activates the vault. Uh, Adam kills the ratchet bomb to get rid of those tokens. Is Adam saying, Ooh, what's going on here? I wonder what the discussion's about. Unless Adam's just deciding whether to oh, block. Oh, Adam didn't oh, double block. Doesn't block. So, That's really surprising to me. Yeah. Uh, he's got he's got a Snapcaster he's got, and yeah. Assurance Vengeance, or he's yeah. just got another Vengeance. Snapcaster Vengeance, yeah. right. That's what I was thinking. I was kind of like, what's the what's the point ten of blocking you, a team? I you. thought he had another Assurance Vengeance, but Snapcaster is pretty much another Assurance Vengeance. So... <laughs> Searing Wind. There we go. Soren's Vengeance takes round one for Adam Prozac. Soren and his Vengeance. So Soren, breakout card of round one here. Yeah. Uh, Soren having a big effect on this. <laughs> and uh, not the Lord of Innistrad. No, no. This is, uh, this is a whole different Soren. Now, we didn't even see new Soren at all. No, it, we didn't. I mean, Heath has three in his deck.